Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. In this video, we continue with the Databricks tutorials. Did you wonder how you can orchestrate your jobs in Databricks? If you did, the answer is with Databricks workflows. So today we are going to have a brief introduction to Databricks workflows. First, let's see the Databricks workflows definition. According to the Databricks documentation, Databricks Workflows is a fully managed cloud-based general-purpose task orchestration service for the entire lake house. Workflows is a service for data engineers, data scientists, and analysts to build reliable data analytics and AI workflows on the cloud. This means you get native workflow offering in your workspace and the ability to automate any lake house capability, including Delta Live Table pipelines, Databricks notebooks, Databricks SQL queries, jars, Python scripts, and Python wheels. There are two ways to orchestrate tasks in Databricks. The first one is workflows. The second one is Delta Live Tables. Now, one thing to consider here is a Delta Live Table pipeline can be used as a task in a workflow, but not the other way around. So what's the difference between Delta Live Tables and workflows? In Delta Live Tables, we can use only notebooks as a source, whereas in workflows, we, have to, we can use jars, notebooks, Delta Live Table pipelines, Python scripts, Python wheels, etc., etc. So we have a lot more options. When it comes to dependencies, now the dependencies in Delta Live Tables are automatically determined. They are inferred based on the source that you provide, whereas in the workflows, we manually set the dependencies. When it comes to clusters, the clusters in Delta Live Tables are, are self-provisioned, so we cannot execute the Delta Live Table pipeline using an all-purpose cluster but we can do that in the workflows, which is a big advantage in my opinion. When it comes to timeouts and retries and import libraries, those features are not supported in Delta Live tables, but they are supported in workflows. Yeah, that, those features are very, very important, right? Because uh, if you want to import libraries, usually you have to do that. And when you actually schedule a job, you want to have timeouts and a number of retries. Let's see some of the benefits of using workflows. First of all, they allow you to build simple ATL ML task orchestration. So you can uh, very, very simply orchestrate your tasks, which is apparently the main, feature, the main feature of workflows. Then they reduce infrastructure overhead. They are easily integrated with external tools. They enable non-engineers to build their own workflows using a simple user interface. As we mentioned, it's very, very simple to actually build a workflow. And they enable reusing clusters to reduce cost and startup. The main workflow components, we have the tasks, so what is going to be executed. Then we have the scheduler, when it's going to be executed. And if we want uh, retries, the number of retries and the timeouts. And then we have the cluster. So we have to define a cluster, how it's going to be executed, right? So we can use an all purpose cluster when we debug, when we are, we are developing our stuff, or we can use a job cluster. So it's going to, you know, it's ephemeral clusters, job clusters are ephemeral clusters and they terminate after uh, the job is run. This is a very typical Databricks workflow example. We have two tasks. The first one uses a, is running a simple Databricks notebook. I have a Python script there. And then we have a Delta Live Table pipeline as, as the second task. And the second task depends on the first task, as you can see. Now, the cool thing about that is, let's say task one runs fine, but task two fails. Now, the cool thing about workflows is you go into task two, you fix the bug, and then you resume the workflow and it continues from task two. It doesn't run task one again, it just starts from task two, which is very important 
when your tasks when your tasks take hours it's very important you know to save time and compute and as you can see there are a lot of uh, job run details on the right side of the screen and they display when it started when it ended the duration the status the compute etc etc now it's time to implement what we displayed on the slide it's a very very simple example so don't worry about that so let me show you first my databricks notebooks i'm in my workspace let me navigate and here i have a simple notebook with a python script that reads using widgets reads uh, a, a parameter reads parameters and then we display the parameters using print so nothing fancy here but the thing is that we are able when we create workflows we are able to pass parameters on the task level and this is what we do here we are going to read uh, the value from this parameter on the task level and then we can also pass parameters on the job level and this is what uh, this line here of code does so it what it gets the parameter that we pass on the job level and then we print those parameters nothing fancy as you can see and then we have a delta live table pipeline where which is not a pipeline yet we are going to make one but this is the script if you want to know more about this script please check my latest delta live table video we go into more details there but here essentially we just move the data from uh, the bronze layer to the silver layer to the gold layer nothing fancy and then we have to create a delta live table pipeline because that's okay that's a notebook but this is not a pipeline the first thing we need to do is scroll down here click on the blade where it says delta live tables and then create a pipeline let's create a delta live table pipeline pipeline name demo and then it's triggered we select the path let's go and select our script here hive metastore we don't need to specify any target schema actually i think we have the example i'm using the example schema and then it has to be fixed size zero workers only with the driver node and then let's create that okay so now we have an uh python notebook and the delta live table pipeline right let's go into workflows so scroll up select the workflows blade and then let's create a job let's call it demo right and then as you can see we have one task now the first task would be python script it's of type notebook but as you can see there are plenty of options here unlike the delta live table but it's only notebook and yeah you can see we have plenty of options which is a good thing source workspace we have to select the path simple notebook and then we can pass parameters uh, you can also use uh, libraries install libraries yeah pretty convenient and you can pass parameters on a task level i think i i named that param task and that would be let's say one right and then you can add also notifications if the workflow fails just email you know the people that you want and the number of retries let's say five times retry at most five times six total attempts with uh, including the main one and wait 15 minutes before retries or something like that and the duration threshold right you can place a duration like five hours otherwise you know if it takes more than five hours this task then it's going to time out so we don't need that either and then as you can see we have the job parameters now if we click on edit parameters well first let's create the task actually and then also let's go 
here in the job parameters and pass a parameter param job i think i'm and pass two as a value click on save and then also click on add task and now we want as a source we want to use a delta live table pipeline so if you haven't if you haven't actually created a delta live live table pipeline it's not going to show up here as you can see where it says pipeline it automatically shows you displays you all the delta live table pipelines so i have created that just name dlt pipeline and depends on the python script which is the first task as you can see now if i remove that those two tasks are going to run in parallel right but if you want to you know uh, orchestrate the task so that one task depends on another you go here you select depends on you define the task that it's going to depend on etc etc run if dependencies are all succeeded so we have plenty of options here if the dependencies are all succeeded at least one has succeeded or none failed or done etc etc there are plenty of statuses here that you can use again notifications retries duration of threshold and i think that's it then eh? we create the task and we have our workflow now if we run this workflow we do we go here where it says you run and this essentially as you can see now it's pending to start the cluster etc etc let's give it some time okay guys so i let it run for a few minutes and then i cancelled it first of all because i wanted to show you so when you cancel a job or when a job fails you have this repair run here and if you click that button it's going to start all over again from the failed task now i cancelled the whole job so it's going to start from the beginning and as you can see here we display uh this pink here this pink uh color means that the job was cancelled if it failed it would be red if it succeeded it would be green and let's make a change because i used a job cluster which as we said our, a, a job cluster is an ephemeral cluster and it's going to terminate after the execution but let's use an old uh, old purpose cluster so let's back go back here as you can see in the runs let it uh, load as you can see here this is the run and uh, this is uh, its task it displays the tasks and the uh, run tot total duration time etc etc so you have this metrics here but let's say that we want to change the cluster so we, you pick the task that you want to change the cluster and then you go into clusters you select an all-purpose cluster in this case save task and then run again and in theory it should run it should start running quite quickly because now the cluster is running already but let's see yeah as you can see it's running uh, it will take a few seconds to run and then it's going to start if uh, all goes well of course it's going to start with the dlt pipeline let it run for a bit yep that one finished now the dlt pipeline is finishing so if you click the task here it's going to show you you know uh the instance that run and as you can see we print the uh task param the task parameter that we passed and the job parameter right so you can see the details here of the execution here let's go back into the run and see the delta dlt pipeline here unfortunately you cannot see details but you have to click here and this will navigate you to the delta live tables you know screen and you can uh, see you can debug here and you can see the pipeline details and the uplet uh, update details and all the metrics here but when this is done we can go back to our workflows you can navigate here and yep here you are we have the delta live tables that you can see the pipeline the delta live 
live table pipeline that we created before and here you can see the job runs and the last one is this one that is uh, running here and as you can see this one is green because it succeeded this task succeeded this one should also be green in a little bit and the whole pipeline would be green that means that it runs successfully right as you can see the workflow finished successfully after a few minutes the delta live table pipelines take a few minutes to spin up you know the self-provisioned cluster and this is green as you can see the bar is green that means our workflow run was successful now if we click on that you will see the workflow uh, has successfully finished and you can also see the details for the delta live table pipeline here and we have you know these uh, lineage you can track your uh, data lineage you can see details etc etc nothing uh, new here so this is about uh, workflows and this is how you can orchestrate your jobs essentially right in databricks the takeaway from this video is that workflows are very easy to use you can orchestrate and schedule your jobs however you like sequentially or in parallel and define the dependencies you want using this very convenient and simple user interface anybody can do that no need to code anything nothing fancy today guys on this video but i hope you learned something please click the like button subscribe to the channel leave a comment and i will see you in the next one thank you